Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be all of my four and a half or five star reads that are in the sci-fi genre. So some of these I'll, I'll mention are kind of just like honorary mentions that I would still recommend even if I didn't necessarily rate them four and a half or five stars. So the first, I guess, series that I'll talk about here is the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. So here is like where I had an honorable mention. So the first book is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. The second book is A Closed and Common Orbit, and then the third book is Record of a Spaceborne Few. So while I do recommend the series as a whole, you know, like I, I rated Record of a Spaceborne Few, I think four stars instead of four and a half or five, but <laughs> you know, it's still, it's still really excellent. Um, the first two books I definitely rated five stars. It's generally like a slice of life sci-fi series where it's just like a really feel-good series. So this first book follows the crew of the Wayfarer and traveling around and they're offered a job to um, tunnel a wormhole through space to a distant planet. It's very much like about found family and uh, it's just it's just such a fun wholesome series. The second book follows a couple of the characters that are mentioned in The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and it's much more focused on like the rights of artificial intelligence and, you know, should we treat them as human or not? Um, I think of the three, A Closed and Common Orbit was probably my favorite, but again, it's just like this, I don't know, I just love all the characters. It's, it's very much a, a character-driven sci-fi series. And then the third book, Record of a Space Born Few, follows like this generational ship and um, it's kind of about like preserving the way of life. So they're kind of like, you know, figuring out how to move their way forward in this modern world while also still preserving their like culture and traditions. So all of them were really great. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think A Closed and Common Orbit is probably my favorite, but I highly recommend this series, especially if you're looking for just something that's going to cheer you up. The next book that I'll talk about is Recursion by Blake Crouch. And this is where, you know, Dark Matter explores time, Recursion explores memory. So Essentially, you know, I've talked about this before on my channel, but um, there's this like false memory syndrome where people are remembering lives that they haven't actually led. And then we also have this technology that allows people to remember just like any memory of their in their life. There's basically like, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out what this false memory syndrome is and things start to connect and basically the world goes to shit. <laughs> it gets really intense. Um, I definitely flew through this. Well, I do think I prefer Dark Matter. I still very much enjoyed Recursion, obviously, so like I did give it five stars. The next two books that I'll talk about are Polaris Rising and Aurora Blazing by Jesse Mahalik. So now I really do, I did win an arc of Aurora Blazing, but I should really get myself a finished copy, I think. Um, <laughs> so this is a sci-fi romance series, and basically, like in this first book, Polaris Rising, we follow Ada. So Ada, is, the main character, is supposed to go through with this arranged marriage and she doesn't want to do it. So she kind of, you know, runs away. She is caught and thrown into a, like, a prison cell with um, Marcus Locke, who is, you know, supposed to be, like, this really bad dude. And uh, he's rumored to kill, have killed his entire chain of command during the rebellion. And this, like, consortium wants to kill him, basically. So she strikes a deal with Locke in order to, you know, avoid, again, being married off and take control of her own destiny. So then in Aurora Blazing, we follow the sibling of Ada from the first book, so Bianca, and she, like, has already had this political marriage and her husband has died before the, the, the events of this book. She tries to save other women from essentially like having this awful marriage like she did um so she is very much like a spy master and then her like their house is attacked and so there's like you know there's a lot of political drama happening here the older brother disappears and so bianca goes out to try to find him and ian the director of their family's like security essentially is like must go retrieve her but then they eventually team up in order to find her brother. Generally speaking, it's a really great sci-fi romance series. I'm kind of obsessed with it. Jesse Mahalik's female characters are just 
fantastic. They're very much like independent, strong women, and I just love them. Um, I really have enjoyed the romances that have happened in both of these books, and it's, there's obviously some like political drama between these these houses, and I don't know. I'm just I'm so excited to read the third book, which I think comes out in 2020. So. Yeah, I, if you're looking for an excellent sci-fi romance series, definitely pick this up for sure. Kind of on that note, I want to do some honorable mentions to The Queen's Gambit and The Queen's Advantage, which are, like, part of the Rogue Queen no novella kind of series. Well, I did write these four out of five stars. I still highly recommend them, especially if you are fans of the Consortium Rebellion series. Um, but basically, I, I read these fairly recently, and, you know, you'll see my thoughts in my December end of the month wrap up, but we have Samara who's the rogue queen, so she's like an elected queen of her people. Her people are starving and so she's like trying to do what she can in order to save them. She essentially like is betrayed and uh, rescues the Kos Emperor and like they essentially like team up and so she's like, well, I'll help save you and help find like the traitors in your court if you give me money essentially. So it's another excellent sci-fi romance series. Uh, the romance is more of a slow burn I would say and you know we get a lot of politics and, and drama and, and fun space things. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely suggest that series as well. The next two books that I'll talk about are Empire of Silence and Howling Dark by Christopher Rocchio. So I have talked about this series several times on my channel already but this is like the Sun Eater series. The main character, well, we'll just let's go for a second. <laughs> the main character um, is like kind of recounting his life, I guess. Essentially, he's remembered as the guy who destroyed a son and killed like a whole bunch of people and um, burned this like alien race out of the sky. So we just like generally follow his adventures and like how and see how thing, events have led up to this to him being the sun, sun eater. So he, you know, this, the Empire of Silence focuses more on his early life. He ends up having to flee to this kind of like backwater world and is fights as a gladiator. So that was like a fun component of it for sure. In Howling Dark, we kind of expand from just this world to like, you know, space, <laughs> I guess. So we follow more of his life, obviously, and he goes past the Solon Empire and deals more with this alien race. And kind of like meets these crazy beings essentially. I'm trying to be very vague so to, as to not spoil things but um, yeah I really enjoyed these books this year. I actually met him at the uh, essentially like the comic-con that was in Raleigh this summer um, and he signed my books so yeah <laughs> that, was, that was definitely exciting. I'm really looking forward to book three which I think comes out in June or July. I'm not quite sure. This very much reminds me of the King Killer Chronicles in Space and in, in that you know, the writing is just beautiful and really engaging and, you know, we have a main character kind of counting his life and how did events play out, <laughs> essentially. Um, but yeah, I highly suggest these series, even though they're gigantic books, I was never bored and just had to keep reading and, you know, know what was going on. The next book I'll talk about is Sweep of the Blade by Elena Andrews. So this is the fourth installment of the Innkeeper Chronicle series, which I absolutely love. So this is like another it's sci-fi kind of romancy series. So in this particular book we follow Maud who I think is the, if I'm remembering this right, I think is the sister of the main character that's featured in the other Innkeeper Chronicles books. But she had been married to a vampire knight. She and her daughter are exiled because of her husband's sins essentially. She has been trying to avenge all of her husband's debts. After doing all of this she has kind of sworn off all things vampire, but the marshal of one of these vampire houses has proposed to her and she says no, but then she goes to visit his home planet. There's politics happening and, you know, it's, it was just really enjoyable. I've loved the Innkeeper Chronicle series, highly recommend it. It's just a super engaging, very easy to read. Yeah, this one obviously focuses more on the vampires, but we have various supernatural type creatures, like there's some werewolves as well. So the next book I'll talk about is Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, and this is the second book or installment, I guess, of the Murderbrot series, and so this is, this is like a series of novellas, and this year I think we get the, I think it's this year, we get the full-length Murderbot novel, so I'm very excited for that, obviously, like, I, I kind of need to catch up. I don't think I've read books three and four yet, or novellas three and four, but I'm, I'm planning on doing that. So Murderbot is like a self-aware droid who has hacked its governor module, so this is like kind of what governs its actions. <laughs> so Murderbot's job essentially is like 
security. And so in the first book, it's hired to take care of this group of scientists. In the second installment, uh, Artificial Condition, uh, we follow Murderbot as it explores its past. It has vague memories of its past where there was this massacre that essentially caused it to be called Murderbot. It teams up with a ship AI to kind of explore its past and you know go from there. So I really like Murderbot. It's very like funny and I don't know. It's just a it's a great series. Definitely want to read more. So the next book I'll talk about is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. So I was kind of like late on the bandwagon to pick this up, but this is kind of like a dystopian or dystopian utopian, I think is how I described it. But there, this world has, you know, we've like eradicated hunger and poverty and disease, but then people aren't dying as frequently <laughs> as they used to. So the scythes are tasked to kill people as a form of population control. So we follow two characters who are apprentice scythes and they like really have to learn about being a scythe and there's like a whole bunch of moral discussions about like what how do you choose somebody and like you know should you be struggling with this decision to kill someone i really love this i have books two and three that i really want to get to so i'm excited to continue this series the next book that i'll talk about is girls with sharp sticks by suzanne young so this was we follow this like innovations academy and you know something is not quite right there and these girls are supposed to be receiving this education to make them well-rounded and basically like be perfect like i kind of mentioned things are not what they seem and so a lot of this book is discovering what's actually going on and like uncovering the sinister secrets here there's a lot of great female friendships here i really liked the main character it was very fast-paced um yeah, it, it was it was just great. The second book, I think, comes out in March, maybe, of this year, and I will definitely be picking it up. And the final book that I'll talk about in my sci-fi favorites of the of 2019 is Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the sequel to Skyward in the series. Spensa is the pilot. So in the first book, it's, it's very much focused on her learning, like, flight at this flight academy. So it's, it's like more focused on the planet and then we expand to more of outer space in, in Starsight. There's also like this academy aspect here, but she's essentially learning more about her powers and just kind of like learning the truth about things. She's like trying to save humanity basically. So this was obviously fantastic. I just love Spencer. She's super sarcastic and really uh, feisty, I guess. This definitely ended on such a crazy note and I'm like I need the next book I need to know what happens next uh but yeah so I, I definitely recommend picking up this series for sure so there are all of my four and a half or five star sci-fi books that I read in 2019 again there were some honorable mentions that I rated like four stars but you know I wanted to talk about them here too just because there were some five star books by those authors that I had read this year and obviously focused on here you know those are just very brief overviews of the books I've talked about I think almost all of these on my channel so you can find my more detailed reviews of them throughout my channel <laughs> but yeah so let me know in the comments if you've read any of these or think you might pick them up i hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome if you enjoyed this video feel free to give it a big thumbs up so that would certainly help me out but with that i think i'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one